I'm throwing a lot of information in this video, therefore I'm going to go fast to cut down on time. Please pause and or rewatch a segment if necessary. This video is for experienced and new players, but familiarity of the rules is necessary to fully grasp the concepts. Operation Sea Lion in World War II was the German plan, but never carried out, invasion of Great Britain. In the board game War Room, Sea Lion is the Axis invasion of the B-1 territory, and it can be carried out. Germany never achieved air superiority over Britain in the war, that's why no invasion happened. In War Room, however, air superiority is not necessary for Germany to successfully take B-1. But it does have risks, calculated risks, and requires a lot of sacrifice. Turn order is crucial for Sea Lion success, and oil resources are critical in determining turn order sequence. As you see in the global scenario, Germany has more oil than Britain, are equal to the Soviets, and are down two from the US. In the war in Europe scenario, Germany is up one over America and Britain, and equal to the Soviets. Italy's turn order isn't important in this operation for either scenario. Germany must invade B1 in round two before the U.S. and Britain use their combined economic advantage to build and deploy additional units to the area. The North Atlantic at the start of the game reveals that both sides have equal number of naval units. However, the Allies have three unit types and Germany only two. This means that force advantage could be denied to Germany in critical sea battles. For Germany, this has to be managed well. Published optional rule mentioned in this game is Long Range Amphibious Assault. If you're playing Germany, lobby against the use using the optional long-range amphibious assault. Some players use a home rule of doing production of units before round one, so-called round zero builds. If so, Germany should not build anything that uses oil, just artillery and infantry. Save the oil for bidding. One thing to keep in mind, enemy aircraft don't pin troop transports, but friendly aircraft do protect troop transports from being eliminated. The A-7 Assault. The first version of Sea Lion we'll look at is the A-7 Assault. It's a good version to run on Allied players who haven't seen Sea Lion before. Listed are the orders for Germany and Italy in round one. First, we'll assume Germany goes before the Allies in turn order. Later, we'll have them go after the Allies and see how the same orders work for both. The key threat is if the British 45th from Eastern Canada can land in the B-1 territory in round two. Watch for this. Order the German First Navy to the A-7 sea space, dropping off a cruiser and a sub in A-6 because of British pinning, and continue the other cruiser to A-7. Order the Fifth Navy to A-3 via A-7, dropping off a pin sub in A-7. The Third Navy goes to A-10, pinning the U.S. First Navy. The German 11th, 12th, and 13th Air Commands go to A-7. The 55th Land Command from Norway to A-7, and the 72nd Land Command from France also to A-7. And lastly, the 14th Air Command from Poland to A-6. It can get there through Germany. For Italy, move the 11th and 12th Air Commands to A-6. They can get there through G-1 also. Rail the 115th Land Command to G-3 France. Move the 112th land to the M1 sea space. This will make the British air units in Gibraltar think twice about leaving. If playing with long range amphibious assault rule, then move the 112th to M2. And the 114th land units should be railed up to the eastern front of your choice. I recommend G4 for a second round uh, counterattack. The likely relevant allied moves are as follows probably trying to load up the A6 sea space. Soviet 1st Navy to A6, but gets pinned on its way in A3. The British 6th and 7th Navies are both pinned and cannot move. The British 11th Air Command will probably go to A6. The British 53rd Land Command will probably cancel its move order if it has one. The 45th Land from Eastern Canada and the 14th Air Command, also from Eastern Canada, will go to A7 or A3 though the 45th order may be canceled with all the German air power in A7 and Axis ships in A3. The British Air Command in Gibraltar will most likely go to the Med. 
The U.S. 82nd land units will stay in B-1 seeing the forthcoming invasion. The U.S. 14th Air will probably go to A-6. The U.S. 11th and 12th Air to A-2. The U.S. 1st Navy is pinned and cannot move. The U.S. 51st Land Command will probably go to A-12 via A-13, skirting the pinning German subs, an Operation Torch Plan. Pinning your opponent's ships gives the advantage of knowing where they will be and causing air power over there. The battle percentages. The A-7 battle, both sides with force advantage. The Allies have a fighter, battleship, and cruiser. They're versus the Axis, three bombers, six fighters, a cruiser, and a sub. Using my binomial spreadsheet odds calculator for a war room dice. No, I... I don't include white dice in the calculation because it's just too complex for my brain, but the black dice are included. The Allied fighter will probably attack the surface. If the British 45th land unit is in A7, it is vital that Germany kill all Allied units, including the lone fighter. Remember, air units protect troop transports. Devote three fighters to the air attack, along with three bombers. Uh, that gives 12 dice an 84% chance to kill the fighter, meaning 24 dice will be devoted to surface attack, giving a 79% chance of killing the battleship and a 99 plus percent of killing the cruiser. Multiply 84% by a 79%, giving a maximum 66% chance of killing all allied units in A7. If only two fighters go, attack, go to, into the air attack, then it's 70% times 83%, giving only a 58% chance of total annihilation of Allied units. If the 45th is not in A7, then devote everything to the surface attack, giving 90% chance of killing both British ships. If you're playing with long-range amphibious assault rule, then the 45th can hang out in A2 and wait to enter B1 in round two. That's a problem, specifically the armor unit in the 45th, as we'll see later. The Axis naval survival is low. A maximum of 12 dice for the Allies, including port advantage, means 95% chance of the German cruiser being killed in action and 98% for the sub. Don't count on their survival. So, about 80% of the time, there will be no ships left in, alive in A7 after the battle cleared for an amphibious assault on B-1. The A-6 battle. Allies have two bombers, four fighters, a battleship, and a cruiser versus the Axis's one bomber, five fighters, a cruiser, and a sub. The Allies will likely send their fighters to attack the Axis aircraft, giving them 12 dice, resulting in about one out of three times killing two Axis fighters and two out of three times killing a fighter and a bomber. Expect to lose two aircraft, sometimes three. Both sides will have force advantage. With port advantage, the Allies will have 15 surface attack dice, with over a 98% chance of the Axis losing both ships. The Axis should have 17 surface dice, resulting in one out of two times killing both the ships and the other time leaving the battleship alive. It's 55% for the battleship and 99 plus percent for the cruiser. In the A3 battle, it's two German subs against a Soviet cruiser and a sub having force advantage, no port advantage involved. If we fought this battle multiple times, in three-fourths of those battles, the Soviets will be unscathed. In one out of three times, the Axis will lose both subs, and in two out of three times, only one sub. So a 67% survival rate should be noted here. A10 battle. Allied battleship and cruiser with force advantage and port advantage. A little more than half the time, a German sub will survive. The other time, neither sub will survive. There's no realistic chance to sink the American battleship and only a 26% chance to sink the cruiser. Overall expected results, the Axis should expect to have no ships in A7 nor A6. One pin sub in A3 and maybe another pin sub in A10. The Allies should have no ships in A7, a battleship in A6, a cruiser and sub in A3, and another battleship and cruiser in A10. 
giving the Allies a 5 to 2 naval unit superiority from starting at an even 8 and 8. Land and combine the surviving Axis aircraft in G1. The Allies will do the same in B1. Germany should not build anything that uses oil. Italy can build anything they want. Round 2. Germany needs to bid enough oil over the Soviets and or the British so that Germany can decide to go before them in turn order. It doesn't matter if the Americans go before Germany, their first navy is out of range. Italy should be bid zero oil. Assess the naval situation. Any ships that Germany can move, any Allied ships that can move, is A7 cleared of Allied ships? Split two infantry off of the 55th Land Command they will be going to Iceland. Battle of B1, German and Italian orders. If A7 is clear of Allied ships, then it will be 80% of the time. The German troop transports are unpinned. Then, order the 72nd and 55th Land Commands to B1. The 55th split offs are ordered to N8 Iceland. All Axis air commands within range are ordered to B1. If the British 45th Land Command was destroyed or is unable to amphib into B1, then the Axis is golden. Otherwise, there is a decision to make whether to invade B1 or not. We'll show you in a couple minutes. Here's the battle of B1 without the 45th present. The air battle, the Allies could have 30 dice for the air battle, killing two bombers and three fighters most of the time. This leaves six or seven fighters and one bomber for the Axis. The ground battle. If the Allies position aircraft for maxing 30 dice on ground with force advantage, the Allies will have only a 33% chance to kill all three German armor units. So 67% of the time, at least one tank lives. Only a 27% chance of killing all artillery, and 56% of the time, two will live. 99 plus percent of the time, all infantry will die for the Axis. With 20 dice from the Axis ground units, Germany needs only 10 dice from air units to reach the maximum of 30 dice. That's four fighters. 30 dice with force advantage will have an 80% chance killing both armor units and a 99% chance of killing all artillery and infantry. Therefore, multiplying the pertinent A7C battle odds with the pertinent B1 ground battle odds, 80% times 80% gives 64% chance of this version of Operation Sea Lion of taking B1. Mission accomplished. It's a lot of losses for the German Navy, but taking Greater Britain two out of three times is worth the risk in my opinion. Do you think the Wehrmacht would have taken those odds? Comment below. Remember the Iceland invasion with two infantry against a garrison? With Iceland in Axis hands and B-1 conquered, the Allied planes in the air have nowhere to land and are destroyed. Thank you, War Room Painstate. Now, if the British 45th landing does survive and amphibs to B-1, it's a lot tougher for the Axis, killing all three Allied armored units there in B-1 with 30 dice sits at only 33% chance. So two out of three times, the Allies will have a surviving armor unit allowing, allowing the Allied Air Forces to land at B1 and be available to fight in round three, plus whatever units in production the British have going there. It would be near impossible for Germany to take B1 in round three. With the British 45th soon landing in B1, and before you write orders for round two, you have to decide if you want to proceed with the invasion with a 1 in 3 success odds or send your troop transports to friendly territory, France or Norway. The A7 assault, Germany goes last. If Germany ends up going last in round 1 after the big three allies bidding no oil, then the key threats are again if the British 45th can land in B1 in round 2 and not pinning or sinking the U.S. First Navy's cruiser. Likely Allied moves are 
Soviet 1st Navy to A6, British 7th Navy to A15, British 6th Navy stays in A6. The British 11th Air Command will probably go to A6. The land units of U.S. and Britain in B1 to A6. The 45th Land and 14th Air Commands in Eastern Canada will go to A2 or A3. The U.S. 14th Air will probably go to A6 or A3. The U.S. 11th and 12th Air to A2, one may go to A12. The U.S. 1st Navy will go to A13, pinning the German 3rd Navy. The U.S. 51st Land Command will probably go to A-12. The same German orders as before order the German 1st Navy to the A-7 territory, sea space. Cancel this order. No need to get them killed if Allies have four ships and four aircraft there already. Order the 5th Navy to A-3 via A-7. Only one sub is unpinned. Now, if three or more Allied aircraft are present in A-3, cancel Operation Sea Lion. Move your aircraft, but no land un or naval units, to the Atlantic. At only 38% survival rate, it's too risky, and we need this sub for surviving for round two. It's critical we have that sub in round two. A lone sub versus one aircraft with no force advantage it's got a 78% chance of surviving. Two aircraft, 67. Three aircraft, 38%. Order the 3rd Navy to A-10, but it's probably pinned by the U.S. 1st Navy. If not pinned, cancel this order. These, two, these subs are not being attacked and will be used to unpin the German land stacks in round two. The 11th, 12th, and 13th Air Commands go to A-7. 55th Land Command from Norway to A7, 72nd from France to A7. We've got equal ships, no pinning, and lastly, the 14th Air Command from Poland to A6. For Italy, move the 11th and 12th Air Commands to A6, rail the 115th to G3 France, move the 112th Land to M1 or M2, and the 114th Land Units should be railed to the Eastern Front. Round two, split two infantry off of the 55th Land Command. These will be going to Iceland. If Germany can't outbid America, and if the U.S. First Navy went to A-13, they should have both ships and only one should be pinned, 54% of the time. They will move to the battleship to A-7 to pin the German troop transports. If both U.S. ships are unpinned and within range of A-7, then the sea lion operation will be, be a failure. Germany won't be able to unpin the land stacks for amphibious assault on B1. Checks to make if you need to cancel the whole sea lion operation. Before writing second round orders, take note of how many unpinned German ships there will be if the orders are executed. It will be vital to offset your troop transports being pinned by the U.S. Navy moving into A7. Can you match them in A7? If not, cancel the operation completely. For example, if both German subs in A13 are destroyed and no, issue, no U.S. ships were sunk, then cancel Operation Sea Lion. Otherwise, Germany goes second outbidding the Soviets and Britain. The split-off sub in A3 should be alive. Order it to A7 to offset a pinning U.S. ship. Order the 72nd and 55th Land Commands to B-1. Order the split-off infantry to N-8 Iceland. Order all access aircraft within range to B-1. The Battle of B-1. Refer to a previous video chapter of the Battle of B-1, taking note of where the British 45th Land Command is and if it can go to B-1. Thank you for watching. Happy hunting, and next time, We'll do the assault on B-1 from the A-6 C-Space. Like and subscribe. Later.